Hello, good morning. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Tuesday, the 8th of August, Lesser Festival of Dominic, my name day. Morning prayer on Tuesday, ordinary time, Church of England, common worship. You'll find the words in the Church of England, common worship, daily prayer book towards the beginning after prayer during the day in the morning and evening prayer during the seasons section. Also at the Church of England's website, Arema's daily prayer and downloadable as app for Apple or Android device. That's my laptop just restarting as I'm trying to uh, set up the Zoom meeting. Every so often the button just doesn't work and I don't know why that is. But um, We'll just ask it to open that meeting when the time comes. So the Zoom code on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook and the audio will appear on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently. And uh, you may join me in the building, of course, too, 8 and 6, most days. So I shall just see if I can click on the uh, morning prayer Zoom button as it opens. Apologies for the delay. And then we'll begin our morning prayer together. I'm still waiting for Zoom to pick up on my profile. We'll begin. I'll click on the Zoom morning prayer link if it pops up. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's righteousness. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's, the Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the appointed psalms this morning are numbers 48 and 52. You'll find the psalms at the back. If, if you're following in the book, I should have said if you are following the book, you might like, like to look up the 8th of uh, August in the Saints, Days and Festivals, halfway through for the extra festival material. Psalms 48, however, and 52 you'll find at the back. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised, in the city of our God. His holy mountain is fair and lifted high, the joy of all the earth. On Mount Zion, the divine dwelling place, stands the city of the great King. 
In her palaces God has shown himself to be a sure refuge. For behold, the kings of the earth assembled and swept forward together. They saw and were dumbfounded. Dismayed, they fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in labour, as when the east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we had heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God. God has established her for ever. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. As with your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion rejoice and the daughters of Judah be glad because of your judgments, O Lord. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Count all her towers. Consider well her bulwarks. Pass through her citadels that you may teach those who come after that such is our God for ever and ever. It is he that shall be our guide for evermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God. I trust in the goodness of God for ever and ever. Why do you glory in evil, you tyrant, while the goodness of God endures continually? You plot destruction, you deceiver. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor. You love evil rather than good, falsehood rather than the word of truth. You love all words that hurt, O oh, you deceitful tongue. Therefore God shall utterly bring you down. He shall take you and pluck you out of your tent and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see this and tremble. They shall laugh you to scorn and say, <coughs> This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great riches and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a spreading olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the goodness of God for ever and ever. I will always give thanks to you for what you have done. I will hope in your name for your faithful ones delight in it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I trust in the goodness of God for ever and ever. Drawing past our first reading to Song of Peace. Turn back in our books to morning prayer on Thursday. Spirit, Tuesday, rather. The Spirit of God, teach us your ways that we may walk in the paths of peace. <clears throat> Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Spirit of God, teach us your ways, that we may walk in the paths of peace. This from Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints. Born at Calarega in Castile of the ancient Guzman family in 1170, Dominic became an Augustinian or Austin friar and led a disciplined life of prayer and penance. He became prior in 1201, but three years later, whilst on a trip to Denmark with his bishop, he passed through France and came across Cathars or Albigenses. They claimed to be Christians but held the heterodox belief that flesh and material things were evil, that the spirit was of God and that flesh and spirit were therefore in permanent conflict. <coughs> Dominic formed an order of preachers to combat this belief, although he would have nothing to do with the vengeful crusades that began to be waged against the Albigenses. The Dominican order spread to many countries in just a few years and did much to maintain the credibility of the orthodox faith in late medieval Europe. Dominic died on this day in Bologna, in the year 1221. <clears throat> Jeremiah 37, our first Bible reading, the whole jolly lot. Uh, if you're following the Bible, Jeremiah is the second of the major prophets, so uh, between half and two-thirds of the way through in the Hebrew Scriptures. If you have both covenants in your edition, 
um, looking for the book of Jeremiah and within Jeremiah, the large number 37 in the margin at the head of the paragraph, chapter 37. Scroll back to it if you're following electronically, it's before the canticle read a moment ago. Zedekiah, son of Josiah, whom King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon made king in the land of Judah, succeeded Kaniah, son of Jehoiakim, but neither he nor his servants nor the people of the land listened to the words of the Lord that he spoke through the prophet Jeremiah. King Zedekiah sent Jehuchal, son of Shelemiah, and priest Zephaniah, son of Marseah, to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Please pray for us to the Lord our God. Now Jeremiah was still going in and out among the people, for he had not yet been put in prison. Meanwhile, the army of Pharaoh had come out of Egypt, and when the Chaldeans who were besieging Jerusalem heard news of them, they withdrew from Jerusalem. Then the word of the Lord came to the prophet Jeremiah, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, This is what the two of you shall say to the king of Judah, who sent you to me to inquire of me. Pharaoh's army, which set out to help you, is going to return to its own land, to Egypt, and the Chaldeans shall return and fight against this city. They shall take it and burn it with fire. Thus says the Lord, do not deceive yourselves, saying, The Chaldeans will surely go away from us, for they will not go away. Even if you defeated the whole army of Chaldeans who are fighting against you, and there remained of them only wounded men in their tents, they would rise up and burn this city with fire. Now when the Chaldean army had withdrawn from Jerusalem at the approach of Pharaoh's army, Jeremiah set out from Jerusalem to go to the land of Benjamin to receive his share of property among the people there. When he reached the Benjamin gate, a sentinel there named Irijah, son of Shelemiah, son of Hananiah, arrested the prophet Jeremiah, saying, You are deserting to the Chaldeans. And Jeremiah said, That is a lie, I am not deserting to the Chaldeans. But Irijah would not listen to him and arrested Jeremiah and brought him to the officials. The officials were enraged at Jeremiah and they beat him and imprisoned him in the house of the secretary Jonathan for it had been made a prison. Thus Jeremiah was put in a cistern house in the cells and remained there for many days. Then King Zedekiah sent for him and received him. The king questioned him secretly in his house and said, Is there any word from the Lord? Jeremiah said, There is. Then he said, You shall be handed over to the king of Babylon. Jeremiah also said to the king Zedekiah, What wrong have I done to you or your servants or this people that you have put me in prison? Where are your prophets who prophesied to you, saying, The king of Babylon will not come against you and against this land? Now please hear me, my lord king, be good enough to listen to my plea. Do not send me back to the house of the secretary Jonathan to die there. So King Zedekiah gave orders and they committed Jeremiah to the court of the guard. And a loaf of bread was given him daily from the baker street until all the bread of the city was gone. So Jeremiah remained in the court of the guard. <clears throat> so it's uh, fairly typical, I think, of uh, people in power. They want to be prayed for, even if they don't believe. They ask advice, which they may may not heed. And uh, there are minor officials that uh, make up their own mind and make their own decisions. And uh, those in overall charge can sometimes make discreet, wise inquiry and uh, may may not listen. But uh, here did, in fact, show Jeremiah favour, even if he didn't turn to follow and to obey God. And uh, so we, as church, will find ourselves at times listened to, at times ignored by the state, by as nationally represented, locally, internationally. Sometimes people come to us quietly, just like uh, Nicodemus went to Jesus in the night. <coughs> and um, sometimes will help us, sometimes won't, and are obviously as open to our interpretation of the signs of the times as anyone else is. So in this case, we've got... The Chaldeans who were besieging and going to take God's people into captivity. We've got the Egyptians who were another superpower. So today we've got um, the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, um, who are in charge of things. We've got uh, the old colonial, Christi uh, colonial Christian uh, West pretending to still be in power. America, Britain, um, Europe as a collegiate sort of group. Um, have more influence perhaps than uh, those other two, but you know things come and go. Climate change, ecological breakdown, the economy, these great sort of waves of power and forces coming and going, and uh, the church uh, has at least as much wisdom as those who study politics and the economy and the environment to bring to bear if we would all talk to each other and listen. Uh, second Bible reading, Mark 1 from 14. Scroll onto it if you're following electronically uh, in a Bible. Mark is the second gospel that opens the second covenant, two-thirds of the way through. Matthew, Mark. Um, we're looking for the large number one uh, 
in the margin at the head of the paragraph, so that's the chapter number, and the small numbers in the text are the verses. We're starting at verse 14 this morning. Mark 1 from 14. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending the nets. And immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat and the hired men, with the hired men, and followed him. <clears throat> so here we have uh, another wave. We have uh, Jesus and John being compared again. Slightly minor comparison, however, uh, one of the less significant comparisons. John is in prison, Jesus is free. John and Jesus were sort of head to head. One's Elijah, one's Messiah. And uh, the writers of the book that we have are of the view that Jesus is Messiah. But there are those that were of the view that John was, might have been, but has been within the Christian faith. Um, Jesus is, uh, and indeed sort of globally, Jesus is Messiah. And uh, John has almost fallen into um, anonymity. John is arrested. Jesus goes to Galilee. Jesus proclaims the good news of God. Arguably, John was doing the same thing. Jesus' message is uh, condensed or paraphrased or uh, precede. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. A number of different expressions there. Kingdom of God. Believe in the good news. Time is fulfilled. Kingdom's near. Repent. And uh, each of those one could spend... Uh, PhD thesis on, I'm sure. But basically, this is the opportunity to think about, to react to your conscience, your spirituality. And in the Christian context, the idea is that God comes as Jesus, dies in our stead, that we who are dead may have life, and by the Spirit enables us to comprehend that and uh, to begin to live as we worship, uh, learn, and serve. The good news in a nutshell. And uh, Jesus is at Galilee, north of the country, sort of the backwater, basically. Um, I guess they did uh, harvest fish, and that might have been traded more widely. But it's basically backwater, but like I suppose in the north of England, fish was significant, but we didn't really notice as the rest of England how significant that was. Um, and indeed, we still don't post Europe, and uh, the challenges of that brings the fishing industry up in the northeast, and in other parts of the country, of course, and in our other countries. However, um, Jesus calls uh, to walk past the people who are fishing, Simon, Andrew, John and James. And we are told he calls them or he, say, he, he says to them, follow me and I'll make you fish for people. And he followed them. Now, that's an extraordinary line. And so I think we're supposed to see this metaphorically. I can't imagine an itinerant preacher walking past some people who are fishing in our own day. Say, follow me, I'll make you fish for people if there was no other if there had been no other interaction, and I know this is to some extent uh, a miraculous text, and we could take it at that Sunday school level, they were just there minding their own business. Jesus said, follow me, and they did. And that'd be wonderful, I'm sure. <clears throat> but it seems to be much more um, helpful to us in our reaction and relationship with God if we think of them have having met each other before, known each other. Um, and um, for their following not to be like going after him into the uh, woods, like a Robin Hood sort of merry men, because uh, Jesus and Mark and the others did live in that area. Um, we've got stories of them having sort of domestic situations going, Jesus healing, was it Mark's mum? He lived in Capernaum. So it's not like they sort of upped and actually left. But I think what that means is, uh, given had that first paragraph, is it's a practical on the, um, if you like, the study that we've just engaged in. So they have changed their tune, changed their mind. So rather than fishing being their main pursuit, they're... Uh, relationship with God in Jesus is their main pursuit and uh, as they do that then the good news is uh, comes to fruition and others come to faith also like fish being caught in a net and it's interesting one one not worth uh, 
casting a net and the other one mending a net. You know, we're teamwork, they have their different skills and talents. And uh, these are pretty much, if they were the first called, um, they are um, remain Jesus' inner circle, with uh, John being his bestie. So to the responsory back in morning prayer in ordinary time on Tuesday. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. The Song of Zechariah, the refrain you'll find is uh, not the normal one for a Tuesday morning, but if you want to look up 8th of the 8th in the book, 8th of August, uh, halfway through St. Days and Festivals, you'll find direction there, possibly common of teachers or some such. Otherwise, join in it, blessed be the Lord. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Blessed be the Lord, God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. <clears throat> Father, Son, Spirit, one in three, three in one, we thank you for bringing us to the beginning of this day, for bringing us back, for encouraging us to turn, for reminding us that the kingdom is near. But letting us know that uh, despite the various waves of uh, themes and challenges that we face in life, sickness, wealth, relationship, that while some things are on the ascendant, others are in decline, and the powers and challenges for us as community wax and wane. We thank you that you are faithful and that you give us direction, even if that doesn't seem to be what we might expect. The Jews would have expected you to protect them in Jerusalem, but uh, according to the scriptures, due to their disobedience, they were going to exile as punishment, and yet you still loved the remnants and were with them and restored them. And so we pray that as you have restored us this morning to life, consciousness, awareness, brought us light in our darkness, so we pray that you will restore us to fullness of health, fullness of wealth, fullness of whatever the third might be, uh, fruitfulness, security, creativity. We turn to... World Council of Churches prayers for Cameroon, Central African Republic, Equatorial Guinea. This morning we are thankful for the natural resources and diverse gifts that come from those countries, such as the distinctive music and dance of Cameroon. We pray for just resolutions to the conflicts and violence among diverse groups and their leaders. <clears throat> Christian Action Research and Education, we pray for effective age verification and other measures to protect the children from online harm from predators, gambling, pornography and material seeking to radical, radicalise and incite self-harm to be implemented soon. <coughs> from Green Christian, as Europe is braced for record-breaking temperatures, a new study by Greenpeace in Central and Eastern Europe reveals the shocking extent to which people in Europe are being perversely encouraged to fly rather than take the train. Policies at the EU and national levels have created an unfair competitive advantage for climate-wrecking airlines, the report finds. The report compares the cost of flight and train tickets on 112 routes in Europe at nine different points in time. Tickets for trains are on average twice as expensive as for flights, according to the report. <coughs> so we pray that we, as... The public as the community will hold our uh, governments, our businesses, our media to account and let them know that actually we don't think that that is right. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our concern for the environment and our work in that regard. Pope Francis' prayer towards creation includes the lines, All powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest creatures. 
you embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out on us the power of your love, that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace, that we may live, harming no one. And that end of this cycle on uh, Tuesdays, we pray for our local uh, sectors of our local economy, the environment, the uh, society and businesses. And we pray for those who work in uh, the economy, both in the public and private <coughs> and uh, voluntary sectors. We pray that all who make decisions will have wisdom, will be open to all those different sort of opinions and uh, maybe speak in private if necessary, making those connections as well as their public views and consultations, that uh, we may all make the right decisions for not only those we represent and work with, but in relation to those who are working alongside, that all may thrive and prosper. Pray you draw uh, others to our committees that look after our church buildings, all they stand for and all they offer especially uh, treasurers we're looking for, for about uh, five or six of our uh, committees. We thank you for uh, John, our church, uh, John, Jason, our church warden here, John, our secretary, and uh, Karen, our treasurer. We pray for a treasurer here <coughs> to uh, lift that burden from her. And uh, we thank you for our friends, for the steering group, for the recreation generation, and... Uh, for those others on the PC, thank you for its growing. We pray that you'll continue to do so. And we thank you for the event we had on Saturday and for the increasing life and connection that uh, this place has following on that uh, motto of uh, church and community, community in church. We pray that you grow our capability and capacity and uh, help us to put in place what we're hoping to do in terms of kitchen, toilet, storage, flooring, heating, lighting, and uh, putting in place the designs and getting the funding together to achieve that uh, basis starting off next year, maybe starting actually to um, sort out some of those works the year after. Pray for Jason's family during the summer break. Pray that he'll be refreshed and encouraged and restored. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pahani yara kishin dir bas parha shadahan hari kami yodok shen niri baha wali akash bahul hari yara mahalane. Te hiyat kishin bar kwa sun shura hadam ya kishnan padra baha ba sub bahun isha karaba aliyan ish bahi ima sama ba sun ya kalas. Te hiyat kishin bar kwa sun shura hadam ya kishnan padra baha ba sub bahun isha karaba aliyan ish bahi ima sama ba sun ya kalas. Te hiyat kishin bar kwa sun shura hadam ya kishnan padra baha ba sub bahun isha karaba aliyan ish bahi ima sama ba sun ya kalas. Te hiyat kishin bar kwa sun shura hadam ya kishnan padra baha ba sub bahun isha karaba aliyan ish bahi ima sama ba sun ya kalas. Te hiyat kishin bar kwa sun shura hadam ya kishnan padra baha ba sub bahun isha karaba aliyan ish bahi ima Shakira <laughs> <coughs> Almighty God, whose servant Dominic grew in the knowledge of your truth and formed an order of preachers to proclaim the faith of Christ, by your grace give to all your people a love of your word and a longing to share the gospel, so that the whole world may come to know you, who is you and your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on Facebook and YouTube.